All right, welcome to Newsmax Daily for Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. Also known as Hump Day for most people who work Monday through Friday, it's the 87th day of the year, the 13th Wednesday, and hashtag National Joe Day. Honoring everyone named Joe, but aimed specifically at recognizing the average Joe. A term that was believed to have come from World War II and the G.I. Joe doll. Remember that? If you have a G.I. Joe doll, especially from way back when, still in the box, you are in the money, my friend. Speaking of that, someone in New Jersey will no longer be just another average Joe. There was one One Mega Millions ticket sold in the Garden State that finally matched all six numbers in last night's $1.1 billion Mega Millions lottery. Lord, I pray that is my cousin Peter, because I know he would give me some. And if you're listening to me, you are probably not that person. But for the rest of us, fear not. Another $865 million is up for grabs in tonight's Powerball. I'm going to pay my mom's bills and I'm going to buy myself a dream house. Yeah. I would travel around the world and help my family out. The last winning Powerball was back on New Year's Day, January 1, first day of the year, 86 days ago. It's just amazing. There are now 223 days, including today, until the presidential election. This is Carl Higby, host of Frontline on Newsmax. Not a bad week for Trump. His net worth doubled to over $6 billion in the last 48 hours. He re-entered the top 500 richest men in the world. Trump just dunked on your totalitarianism with capitalism. Oh, and this is great, too. What I love to keep pointing out here, keep in mind that the, the left made Trump this money. They kicked him off Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. They opened the door for him to make his own social platform. And and while liberal activists are trying to take down his business empire, which, by the way, the New York appellate court overturned and scaled back like 85 percent of. I mean, this crazy Judge Engeron decision, all the polls because of that are trending in the right direction for Trump. Arizona, Trump's up by five. Nevada, he's up by two. North Carolina, six. He beats out Biden in Wisconsin. It's still early, but like all the polls show that Trump is the favored one in this whole race. On top of all that, his bond to appeal Letitia James, as we talked about yesterday, on her, you know, all of her glory and pantsuits, was reduced to $175 million from almost $500 million, to which Trump might drop a reporter yesterday on this. The appellate division, thank you very much. What's your collateral for the bond? Cash. <laughs> These goofballs think that prosecuting Trump will somehow hurt his campaign. Some shiny shoed consultant probably came up with this notion like, hey, let's tie him up with legal mumbo jumbo and take him off the campaign. Dude, these appearances are his campaign trail. And the same media trying to defeat him is giving him billions in earned media. And I got to thinking about this. So let's troll back as Republicans. We don't do this enough. Trump was really the first guy to kind of break that ice. These people want to play games. Well, two can play at that. I went over this ruling. I see nothing in there about how this bond needs to be posted. And I was looking at the front of our currency where it says legal tender for all debts, public and private. Letitia James has no sense. Let's give her a few. Pay that bond in pennies, baby. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. (laughs) Yeah, buddy. Excellent. Excellent suggestion from Carl Higby, who actually did all of the research on this. We did some math here. There's about, well, not about, there's 17.5 billion pennies in Trump's required $175 million bond. Seeing how there's almost 30 billion pennies in circulations, we could probably get most of this done in the 10-day window. Now, the rest could be nickels and dimes if we absolutely had to. But, you know, just as an inconvenience for Letitia James, which is my ultimate goal here because I don't really care for her, let's say that we could get our hands on 17.5 billion pennies. There's 181 pennies. In a pound, that would be 96.7 million pounds of pennies, 48,342 tons of pennies. Now, assume the average triaxle dump truck carries 30 or 23 yards of material, which comes to about 30 tons. That would be 1,611 dump trucks full of pennies. I say, Dump that right in front of the parking garage at Letitia James's office. Wait till everybody's in there first. Then have Trump hold a rally from the top of the coin pile. Tie up every resource in her office and just make them count the money from now until the end of time. 
Carl is the host of Frontline, 5 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. And as Team Trump continues to campaign and now prepare for an April court date in the New York criminal trial over money paid to a porno star, we learn something about the judge in that case, Judge Juan Mershon. Trump put out something on True Social today, and he talked about how that Juan Mershon's daughters connected to liberals, uh, talking about her working at a Democratic firm, uh, and the connections there to a lot of folks. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, this is is really has the appearance of a an, an election interference because the case wasn't brought by the former the DA, and it's being brought now. Uh, Hogan, your reaction to this court date and Juan Mershon? Yeah, I mean, so much of this, as you begin to peel back each layer, kind of exposes the radical left's attempt to try not just to interfere in this election, not just so muddy the waters that independents won't vote for Donald Trump in in November, but they're trying to bleed him dry financially as well. Uh, They've been working on this now for years. This Stormy Daniels case is something that's nearly a decade old. Forget the fact it's past the statute of limitations. So many problems with it. Uh, Cases like this have been litigated before. John Edwards, famously a Democrat. There were no crimes there. The problem, though, exists for Donald Trump, and that are the venues of these cases. When you're talking about New York, you're talking about uh, Fulton County and Georgia, uh, Washington, D.C., they're kind of tailor-made to pull from a jury pool that already is predisposed to dislike him. Ninety-some-odd percent of the people in D.C. voted against Donald Trump and voted for Biden, for example. So this is clearly a situation where the left thinks it can work against Donald Trump because they know he's beating Joe Biden in all the polls. So how do they weaponize the government against him? It's just to flood the zone with all types of nonsense. And every time you start to peel this back, these cases tend to erode. They're not real. They're not based on fact. And the American people are going to see that sooner or later. That's Hogan Gidley, former campaign press secretary for Donald Trump with Bianca De La Garza on Newsline. That's at noon. So the statement about the judge that she mentioned Trump posted on Truth Social Media, which is now worth billions, read like this. Judge Juan Mershon, a very distinguished looking man, is nevertheless a true and certified Trump hater who suffers from a very serious case of Trump derangement syndrome. I'm reading verbatim. His daughter is a senior executive at a super liberal Democrat firm that works for Adam Shifty Schiff, the Democrat National Committee, Senate Majority PAC, and even crooked Joe Biden. Posts like that are exactly why some people can't stand Donald Trump and why others absolutely love him. And yesterday, Judge Mershon granted the Manhattan District Attorney's request for a limited gag order against the former president. So that prevents Trump from making public statements about witnesses in the hush money case, about uh, prospective jurors, members of the court, and lawyers involved in the case as well. This is former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi on the Chris Salcedo Show. Good to see you, lady, as always. Uh, We're seeing Trump's poll numbers go up and up and up as the lawfare ramps up and up and up. Americans flocking to Trump's banner You think the American people understand that what's happening to him is patently unfair and that's why his numbers continue not to suffer but actually increase? Certainly certainly the American people see it. And the more they do to President Trump, the more they see it. It's horrible what they're doing to him, what they're trying to do to him. They won't be successful. Chris, I can tell you in a court of law, all of these cases will ultimately be reversed. But sure, the American people see it. And especially New Yorkers now. And and these big businesses even see it. If they can do this to Donald Trump, they can do it to anyone. And yeah, that Judge Ingeron is horrible. He's been reversed at least five times during the course of this civil trial. And now, at least the fifth time, the appellate court just reversed him and dramatically reduced that number that President Trump has to pay. And you were right, it's absurd, the number that they wanted him to pay. It's still absurd because ultimately he won't have to pay anything. This case will get reversed. It's a witch hunt by Letitia James. And we say that because she campaigned on getting Donald Trump. And that's not what a prosecutor should do. She has a clear conflict, yeah. not even an apparent conflict. So she has to um, she has to really get her act in order. She's not, though. She's going to keep going after him. But it's not going to make a difference because ultimately our justice system prevails, and that's why we have appellate courts. But it's going to take a while. Yeah. Pam, you remember that? Just as you were talking, I was reminded 
Uh, Harry Reid, he told that lie about Mitt Romney and his taxes back when Romney was rolling over for Obama in that election, remember? And yeah. it was proven that Harry Reid was a liar about the taxes. But Harry Reid looked at the camera and said, well, he didn't win, did he? That's exactly yeah. the game that the Democrats are playing right now with all these cases against Trump, no? Yeah, Chris, it is, but at least it's backfiring now because this has been a concerted effort by the Democrats, whether it's New York, D.C., Palm Beach, all of Georgia, all of these different jurisdictions. I firmly believe they're all working together to get Donald Trump, but people are seeing it because they've gone way too far and they think they can stop the man and they can't. He's going to be the next president of the United States and it scares the progressives and the liberals to death. Former Florida AG Pam Bondi, who also weighed in on the Georgia case, and Fulton County DA Fannie Willis. In the meantime, right. Fulton County DA Fannie Willis telling CNN she's not embarrassed by the fallout from her unethical behavior with prosecutor Nathan Wade. Listen. I don't feel like my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. Um, you know, I guess my greatest crime is... I had a relationship with a man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. Yeah, train. Being a Democrat means you never have to say you're sorry or, or be held to any standard, right, Pam? Right. So, so her, her only crime was hiring her boyfriend to prosecute and go after Donald Trump, paying him three, four times more than the other attorneys were making and going on vacation with him, allegedly using that money that he was getting paid. Oh, so that's no crime on her part. Yeah, they just they, they always no. double down. Former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi on Tuesday's edition of the Chris Salcedo Show. And in the effort of equal time, let's shift gears to current President Joe Biden with Rob Schmidt. Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. Right now, two different congressional committees are harassing Merrick Garland to release more evidence from his Biden classified documents case. Special Counsel Robert Herr has declined to recommend charges against Joe Biden, despite evidence that Biden stole documents from a secure setting shared them with other people, had his staff move them around for months before claiming to have found them by surprise, and then pressured his ghostwriter to destroy recordings of him reading classified information aloud. Despite evidence of all of that, no charges recommended. Within the official Robert Herr report that we have seen, the Washington Free Beacon just unearthed just one of many lies that Biden has been spewing for decades as he built up one of the phoniest and most corrupt political careers in American history. It's a lie Biden accidentally told the special counsel, adding to the many crimes that Biden allegedly committed that her would just brush off. It's the story manufactured to explain how Joe Biden got into politics, a story about a young man suing his construction company after a gruesome injury. Biden claims as a young attorney, he defended that construction company and brilliantly won the case and it broke his heart to win it. And he immediately bailed on a bright legal future to go into politics and protect the little guy. Yes, of course, this is a Joe Biden story. It sounds just like one, doesn't it? It's a story Biden told to many voters over the years before he would eventually run for president and make up an even better story. This one. It was there on August of 2017 we saw Klansmen and white supremacists and neo-Nazis come out in the open. And a brave young woman lost her life. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. He said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. No, he didn't. <laughs> but I guess that's why you ran. And all that from a man who eulogized and exalted Cyclops, by the way. Now, we know the Charlottesville story is nonsense because Hunter Biden was telling business partners that Joe was running for president long before Charlottesville ever even happened. So another lie. That's all they do is lie. But let's zero in on the previous story, which many voters, of course, loved. It was a charming tale from a valiant American political leader, which in truth was the creation of a pathological liar who understands that his voters specifically are incredibly gullible. The Free Beacon with a fact check on this, although Biden did work at a law firm tapped to defend a construction company in a negligent suit like the one he described to Robert Herr, that case concluded in 1968 while Biden was still in law school. 
and the welder actually won the case, not lost. In fact, he walked away with $315,000 from the company, more than a million dollars today. And with that, more of the real Joe Biden, who claims at 21 years old he won a massive and decisive legal victory for a Delaware law firm and a construction company, when in reality the case was a loss and Biden had nothing to do with it at all. We see more of the real Joe Biden now. The truth is, if Joe Biden's mouth is moving, you're about to hear either a blatant political grift, some kind of racial pandering, or just a flat-out ridiculous lie. Again, that is Newsmax host Rob Schmidt. At the beginning of that segment, Rob mentioned congressional committees pushing Attorney General Merrick Garland to release more information in Biden's classified documents case. Congressman Byron Donalds from the great state of Florida is a member of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee. Let's be clear about one thing. Merrick Garland and the entire Department of Justice has been stalling and protecting Joe Biden. They've been protecting Hunter Biden. They've been protecting the Biden family. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to get our hands on those audio recordings. And it's important for oversight to have this information because we are responsible for looking at everything that happens throughout the federal government, same as, as the Judiciary Committee. For Robert Herr and, frankly, for Merrick Garland, to hold this information from Congress is ridiculous. There is no special privilege to that information, to an audio recording, especially considering the fact that Robert Hur in his own report said that he wasn't filing charges. So that information should be readily available to the Oversight Committee and to the Judiciary Committee. But once again, Merrick Garland is carrying the water for Joe Biden to protect Joe Biden. Well, you have a stunning revelation about how deep all of this goes, too. And there's a report now from House Oversight uh, that links the CIA to preventing interviews with the IRS to Hunter Biden's sugar daddy. That's Kevin Morris. Uh, we've seen him show up on Capitol Hill uh, several times with Hunter now. And Congressman Donalds, this is pretty stunning. Basically, whistleblowers have come forward to your committee and saying, yes, we were going to interview him, but the CIA called for these emergency meetings at Langley. Fill in our audience of why you think the CIA would want to stop an IRS investigation into Hunter Biden if this is just about unpaid taxes. Well, look, I don't want to speculate too much. There's a lot of information we have to get from uh, the CIA and, frankly, from the FBI and Maine Justice on this matter. But let's be very, very clear. If you have CIA agents interfering in a federal investigation, who actually made that call? Who asked for the CIA to be involved? And it, if you're going to speculate about anything, it's does somebody at the White House know about this, whether it was the former chief of staff, Mr. Klain, the White House counsel, or the president of the United States himself? You do not typically have the CIA in, in, engaged in a domestic investigation into tax evasion. Something is going on. We have to get to the bottom of this. And this is not just a, who they want to go after Joe Biden. This is serious. You have the CIA interfering with a federal investigation. Congress must investigate this, and we got to figure out what's happening here, because these kind of things cannot continue in our government. It's also within your congressional power and what you sign an oath to do. I mean, you are oversight. This is what you are supposed to do. Florida Congressman and potential vice presidential candidate Byron Donalds on Newsmax. And speaking of vice presidents, did you see Robert F. Kennedy Jr. named his running mate yesterday? Right now, there are people going, wait. He's running? <laughs> don't forget, the majority of Americans don't pay that much attention. And yes, he's been running. And why is RFK Jr. really running for president? I mean, he started out as a serious contender, but it doesn't seem that way now. After talking about possibly having NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers as his running mate, yesterday he named California attorney and philanthropist Nicole Shanahan as his running mate. I don't know if she is related to the San Francisco 49ers coach, Kyle Shanahan. He said that he liked her for her commitment to health and organic foods and deep inside knowledge of how the technology industry uses artificial intelligence. Well, that right there does make a lot of sense, but we'll see. The other big story, of course, is the Baltimore Bridge collapse. The FBI and the NTSB, along with local agencies, is on scene investigating yesterday's collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. 
This is Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg on Good Morning America. I can't weigh in or speculate on anything related to the investigation. Uh, wh- what I do know is that uh, the force of this ship uh, is, is almost unimaginable. Th- this is a vessel that was about uh, 100,000 tons uh, carrying its load. So 200 million pounds went into this bridge. Well, we all know that. Thanks, Pete. Every time he's on TV to talk about whatever the issue or disaster is, he starts with, I can't speak to that. Well, then don't go on TV. Rescue crews have halted their operations today. There are still six people unaccounted for. And this is what we know. A Singapore cargo ship named the Dolly did report a propulsion issue before the crash and dropped anchor, which experts say is protocol. Officials, as you know, yesterday were quick to say there was no indication that the ship's crash and the bridge collapse were intentional, and there is no indication of any nefarious activities. Obviously, accidents do happen, even ones as big as this, and I am not suggesting in any way whatsoever that it wasn't an accident. However, Maryland Transportation Secretary Paul Whitefield did note that the ship was way off center from the highest point of the bridge, where it should have been. Now, if it had a propulsion issue, obviously that could explain or partially explain why it wasn't where it should have been. Maybe it just couldn't navigate to where it needed to go and slammed into the pillar of the bridge. But we're also learning now that even though this bridge has been there for decades, experts today are saying the pillars supporting the bridge, you know, the massive columns that hold it up, didn't have or don't have enough protection around them. And something else that you'll hear a lot about today is Democrat Marilyn Lands, who won an Alabama State House seat in a long-held Republican district in yesterday's special election in Alabama. After centering her campaign on promoting access to abortion and vitro infertilization. MAGA extremists are devising new and cruel ways to further erode our most basic freedoms. This is what every Democrat including the president, is going to center their campaign on, and this is a potential problem for Republicans. On Wall Street, after two losing days, markets opened in the green this morning. Digital World Acquisition Corp, symbol DJT, holder of Trump Media and Technology, will be in focus again today. You may have heard that Visa and MasterCard have agreed to a $30 million settlement with regulators to lower some of its fees. It's good news, right? The part you may not have heard, though, is that the fees are the ones that they charge merchants, businesses that you and I are using our cards at. They're not lowering the fees to us. Many merchants, especially service companies, you know, like electrical, plumbing, AC people, charge us an extra 3 4% on the bill for using a credit card. So perhaps in the future, that might go down to 2%, 1%, or maybe even be eliminated like it was back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I mean just a few years ago when you could pay with a credit card and not have to pay extra. All right, stay up to date on all the news all day long right here on Newsmax. It is available on most major cable systems, as you know, and make sure you have Newsmax Plus. Simply go to NewsmaxPlus.com, get signed up. You can get a free trial. It includes all of your favorite shows and hosts with great expert analysis from people like Hogan Gidley, Governor Mike Huckabee, Tony Schaefer, Carrie Lake, Alan Dershowitz, Judge Napolitano, and many others. I'm Tony Marino. Thank you for listening. Listening to the Newsmax Daily, today is also American Red Cross Giving Day and International Whiskey Day. Two great causes that I'm down with. Enjoy the rest of your day and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere.